Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here, Thistle Gypsy. Taking a look at Tarot of the of the Southwest Sacred Tribes. I don't know why it has a subtitle of Tribes of Earth. I don't know if this person had maybe the intention of doing Tribes of Water and Tribes of Air. I have no idea. Um, but the maker looks like Violetta if it'll focus Montreal indicates if it will, there it is that she had traveled to the United States doesn't say where she's from but it says she traveled to the United States and was very struck by the art she is the artist um, and so there's not much to the little white book I'll show you in a minute um, the conceiver and the manifester of this deck. Um, so she was very um, taken by the artistic um, expressions that she saw among the Native Americans while she was in the United States and decided to try doing a tarot deck of them. So, um, as you see here, this, this little white book is truly tiny, and what she does with each of the cards is she just gives them a few keywords, a few more for the majors, and about, I don't know, three or four for the minors. Um, but she does talk about her approach and it's primarily an interest in the arts although she says that she did look up um, some sociology on the different kind of tribal groups or tribal con um, traditions kind of right off the bat you know when you see a name like this it's like well what's so sacred about the southwest tribes as opposed to all the other tribes you know so there is a bit of that. Um, that said, I think one of the things that, and it's even on the on the front, one of the things that attracted me to this deck is that it does seem, I thought it might even have been a native um, artist. And so to me it does seem to, I'll say this, it seems successful in what she's attempting to do in honoring um, the artistic, I don't know what you'd say, I won't even say traditions, I don't know what the word is, <laughs> it's too late in the day. Um, I don't, it isn't feel, what is it? I don't know. The artistic ambiance, anyway, of uh, some Native American art. So it says here, so I'm going to read part of it where she's kind of describing her take on things here. The Tarot of the Southwest Sacred Tribes gives an aesthetic introduction to southwestern native art, revealing the beauty of the traditional mediums, materials, and creations, um, which are represented in these cards. Obviously, she didn't use those, but she represents them in these cards. Feathers, pottery, garments, costumes, houses, baskets, rugs, and jewelry, and all kinds of background landscapes. So it's kind of a tribute to them in that way. The spiritual qualities of the people are further represented through the use of organic features, geometric trimmings, and most importantly, ceremonial tools and instruments, all of them filled with symbolism. Symbolism that she doesn't go into here in this book. So, um, The aesthetic traditions of a few of the southwestern cultures have been incorporated into the four suits of the minor arcana. The suit of swords has been inspired by the Apache ceremonial swords. I had no idea they had 
ceremonial swords. The suit of wands motif is based on Hopi ceremonial clubs. So we'll have to look for those when we get to them. Used for sacred dances. The suit of cups draws from traditional Rio Grande Pueblo pottery. Uh, and the motif of the suit of coins is the Navajo Medicine Man sand paintings. There exist at least 57 nations from which I just drew selectively and subjectively according to my aesthetic criteria and my feelings about the way they interacted with the four suits. So she is attempting to be temperancy, kind of combining um, what exists with what, you know, what her own artistic goals are. Um, the major arcana images have been chosen according to the different symbology of each arcana, according to the classification of Stuart R. Kaplan in his Encyclopedia of Tarot, Volume 1. Both the major and minor arcana draw from Im their images from the nations below. So what she's done is she's divided up the majors into four parts and assigned a suit. So the Apache, or as she calls it, Apachean group, indicating Western Apache, Chiricahua, Mescalero, Lipan, Jicarilla, or Jicarilla, Kiowa Apache. Those particular tribes um, are represented by the chariot, justice, um, strength, death, judgment, and the suit of swords. The Pueblo group, the Hopi, Hopi Tiwa, or Tewa, Hano, Zuni, Akoma, and Laguna are represented by the fool, the empress, the emperor, the hermit, which she is calling Father Time or the aged man, the hanged man, the magician, and the world. Also the suit of wands. The Rio Grande Pueblo group consisting of Acoma Isleta or Isleta, Gemes, can I don't know whether to pronounce these some of them more like Spanish, if that's Gemes or Gemes, I don't know. Cochiti, Taos, Picuras, San Juan, Sandia, San Felipe, Santa Ana, Santa Domingo, Tesuc, or Tesuque, Santa Clara, San Ildefonso. All of those groups together are represented by the lovers, temperance, the star, the moon, the sun, and the suit of cups. The Navajo nations are represented by the High Priestess, the Hierophant, the Wheel of Fortune, the Devil, the Tower, and the Suit of Coins. And so that's the conception. I can't remember if there is a book that eventually was created as an accompaniment to this. Um, but when she goes into, you know, this part, it's just very sparse, kind of like you would expect from uh, um, from a low scarabeo, little white book, only one language. <laughs> um, this is a U.S. game systems. Comes with two little cards. You know, kind of a title card and just a little bit, kind of a summarization of some of the other stuff I put, you know, from the, from the little white book. This is the backing. So this is an owl. I mean, it looks kind of like a blanket, but it's an owl and the people. Back to back. And so I was really attracted to the art in this as seeming to me to be appropriate. Um, 
evocative art in general for Native Americans, but particularly the Southwest. But I will say this after having gotten it, that um, You know, and some of it, I mean, that's that's a wonderful image to me, and that's the one that's on the box. Now, I don't know if, how much that person speaks to, I mean, to me, he almost has more of a hierophantish feel to me. Um, but, yeah. I got this kind of, obviously, if you can see the condition of the box used, and since it's out of print, it pretty much has to be used. But the cards are like brand new. But this is a rather, when you get to the minors, it is pretty darn pippish. And so I'm not sure how that will sit with me. And of course, there's always this, or not, I guess not always, but certainly in this deck, um, this overlay of. European or Christian, because you've got the B and the J on these things that look like maybe corn stalks. It's like, couldn't we have tossed that out? Is that really necessary? <laughs> um, yeah. But, so, you know, there's kind of an inability to just let it be this one well, this one set of cultures, because it isn't just one culture. But I really do like the images, and I like the, the expressions on people's faces, for the most part, to me, seem very peaceful, and anybody can correct me, but and of course, this is, you know, you come to this through my own faulty lenses where it comes to Native Americans. But my impression was that one of the important aspects, even when you go to a powwow, when you have the powwow dancers, is um, even though their cultures have clowns, you know, and will laugh and sing, but is that aspect of dignity. And I feel like these cards catch that really beautifully. So here is the Hierophant, you know, so it's like throw away that, throw away whatever this thing is called, you know, it's not necessary. You don't need it. I don't know if they're just trying to give enough of the traditional cards to um, to make the deck usable to people who need the tarot associations, the traditional tarot associations, associations, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this up here is supposed to be like a dream catcher um, or kind of what it is. I guess that they're leaving it open to interpretation. But just, I think, lovely images. And some of it's like, well, what, you know, what time period are we talking here? It seems like we're we go between a variety of time periods. But I don't know. I just, I am... To say I'm a fan of the, the, the art isn't correct, but... I do really like it, and I feel like I could kind of come up with stories about these people. I think this is a lovely hermit. There with his staff. And these are ants. 
I hadn't realized that when I first looked at it. But has anybody ever seen ants do that? You see in the symbol there, those are ants. Um, circled around something like they would do for water or something. Kind of like the sand painting ideas. And then the wheels up at the top, so... Yeah. That's justice. The hanged man, so here you have the Hayuka or the clown figure. And putting a clown figure in there makes it a little bit different. It has a different meaning to me. Death is death. Temperance. Again, kind of minimalist temperance. So this is a curious um, decision in terms of the devil, for the devil to be a buffalo, because, you know, the buffalo, now I don't know about for the southwestern tribes, was, but it was seen as a source of life. You know, everything came from the buffalo. So, so that's a little problematic for me, just in terms of concept. I love the art, but it doesn't work for me as a devil. I could almost see this more as the emperor, to be honest. Um, the tower, not too surprising. Pueblo. Power being struck. The star. I'm not sure what the birds are. They're not eagles because it's got that kind of a sharp beak. So, more like a sandpiper or something. The moon. And they've really turned the lobster into a crab in this one. I like how you have kind of a shadow coyote and a shadow dog, I don't know, doing different things. That's really interesting. The sun, I believe these are the Hopi that have those kinds of headdresses or hairstyles or whatever they are. I mean, I could be totally wrong. I really like this as a judgment card because it feels to me like sort of gathering your ancestors or getting in touch with your ancestors. The world. You can see in the circle above there's an emphasis on the four directions and then the four secondary directions and then the directions in between them, so I particularly like that one. And the first suit that they present is the suit of swords. Now, kind of like a regular tarot, I'm not sure how distinguishing, you know, the character is. I think that's a beautiful queen of swords, though. Between the different suits and the courts, there is one odd one. One of the pages is actually reversed to us, so he's turned away from us. And that's pretty, a pretty mild <laughs> knight of swords compared to most. And there you go. And I'm not sure what the various symbols are up, up top. I don't know if she has any idea what they mean or if she is just using them as artistic elements, like those um, feathers down in the corner here. 
It's a ten of swords, and yet she's still picking up another one. Pretty traditional Rider Waite Smith, nine of swords. And again, eight of swords, except she has her eyes open, her eyes are wide open, and it's interesting, they've got the teepee there. I guess that's supposed to represent what would be the city in the background in a traditional card. Seven of swords, so again, this is how it's kind of pippish, you know, there's nothing here that set, you know, that indicates theft. Now there is um, the situation of trying to carry more than you can and destroying something in the process there. Um, a beautiful six, a beautiful six of swords. Five of Swords, again, pippish to me because you lose the sense of there being anybody else here that has been offended. The Four, this is really interesting to me because this shadow looks like she's been buried underground, which I think in some places was a tradition. Um, and I can't remember what it had to do with, but it, you know, it's kind of pushing all of your buttons to bury you underground and then leave you there for a certain period of time and trying to maintain your composure. Um, so that seems to be what that is alluding to with what looks like grass or sod up above her. So very different, interesting take on that card. Three of Swords is less gory than usual. Kind of Got the blood on the feather. Two of Swords, traditional indecision card. And an Ace of Swords. I have no idea what that three pronged thing is there. So we're on to the Wands. So here's our king. Queen. Knight. Page. The ten of wands. So the usual, this person is holding six and is losing four. Now, and this is an odd thing, is that in the wands, most if not all of them, you've got like this envelope, what looks like an envelope to me. Now, maybe it's something completely different, <laughs> but it's like, what does that have to do with tribes in the southwest? Were they, was this particular group known for writing? I don't know. That would be unusual among Native American groups. There are eight of wands, seven of wands, so again, it's just pippish. Just, they're just kind of there. It reminds me a little bit of the um, Terror of the Cat people in that pippish sense. You've got a figure, but there's nothing indicating what the person is doing with the wands. Five of wands. This one is a little bit more so, except they're all turned away. So, you know, the whole idea of active conflict is not there, or competition is, to me, lost. And again, she may be interpreting them differently, so I can, you know, I'll look in the guidebook. You know, and again, it's like that orange thing binding them together. I don't know if that's supposed to be like energy or what, but it's, I don't know.
Okay. The three of Wands. So, you know, the kind of differences that I see here and stuff and just the different feel of it, you know, kind of begs the question, do I interpret these? This could easily be interpreted like a traditional Two of Wands. So do I do that or do I branch out and decide to interpret them differently? We're on to the cups with their beautiful pottery. King, queen. Night. Page. So that's a, that's a sweet page of cups. You got a bunch of fish kind of floating all over the place there. Um, <clears throat> but with those, um, with the pottery, it ends up to me turning the the suit of cups almost into the suit of crafts. Um, you know, so that's the nine of cups. All these beautiful kind of renditions of pots in the Southwest tradition. The seven has some interesting kind of bogies in it. Six of cups, sweet six of cups. Interesting five of cups with kind of a almost ghost-like figure there. It's like there's nothing in there. Kind of being emptied by your loss. And yep. Four of Cups. Three of Cups. Again, kind of an interesting take on things. Definitely won't be dancing with those things on their head. Um also an interesting Two of Cups. And the Ace of Cups. It's like that bird is taking a nosedive into the cup. The cup actually looks like a cat-like figure. All right. So pentacles, last but not least, coins, king of coins. So the coins are kind of like shields, which I think they have been called in other Native American decks. Queen, knight, and here's the one that has its back to us, page. And that's corn up in the corners, which to me is appropriate. Do we have no corn in the others? Ten. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. I don't remember who the coins were, but you'd think they would have more of a a building or dwelling in the background. The nine. The eight. Pretty traditional eight. The seven. I mean, there's just no kind of there's no evocation uh, of the usual meaning of the card. 
Oh, excuse me. Six of coins. So this is really interesting because look at these figures up here, these bent over women and then this person. So you do have the idea of prosperity and maybe misfortune or this almost looks more like old age. But you know, somebody with untreated scoliosis could end up bent over like that even at a fairly young age or at any rate not as old as they look right there. Five of coins. So yeah I don't know they look a little bit lost but not as down and out as usual. Four of coins. Three of coins. You've got the builder or designer aspect there. Two of coins. There's no no sense of him juggling, except that if he's going to pick up the one, maybe he'll have to put down the other. And then the ace of coins, which has a bunch of plants on it, so kind of evokes the seed-like aspect of the pentacles. So there it is. Kind of a leisurely walk through in case anybody else comes across this deck at a not outrageous <laughs> price. Um, or if it comes up in a trade for somebody or something along those lines. Um, so yeah, I just, I don't 100% know what to think of it, so I'll have to try some, well, I should see, how does it, how does it shuffle? As if this video isn't long enough. Let me see how this thing shuffles. For me, I almost immediately was looking at trimming, oh, yeah, it shuffles quite nice even with my hands. Um, did I do that upside down? Yes, I did. Oh, well. So they'll have reversals <laughs> unless I go through and change them. Um, I could see on this because to shuffle, to side shuffle them, they're a little bit wide for me. And so I was thinking of taking some white off of it because there's a fair amount on the bottom there that I could take off and some at the top, even if I left the sides. But I think this is a deck that would look particularly good if at least three sides, well, and this were taken off, especially if you then had them side by side. That would be really, that would be really cool. But there is the issue, of course, it'd mess up the back because the tops and bottoms wouldn't be even. Well, maybe they'd be close to even. Um, <clears throat> but it would make much easier shuffling like this so that I wouldn't have to do this. But I have not been on a modification kick, just the labor involved in the Eight of Pentacles aspect of it, where you have to sit there and kind of do the same action over and over again um, because I use a cutter. That's just a lot of whacking. Um, so I have to feel highly motivated to do it and I'm not feeling highly motivated to do it. So. Um, I'll let you all go, anybody who stayed this long, and I might try my own deck interview, but I don't think enough people have this deck for that to be interesting to others, so I won't really post it. Um, certainly the fact that I've gotten this deck and that I paid more than I would usually pay for a deck for it, that I've, I've given in and I'm getting, I'm getting whatever native decks at least don't turn me off completely because occasionally some do. Um, this was not one of them. This was one I particularly liked the imagery because what I find is that a lot of the 
Native American decks. I'm just not very attracted to the art and imagery in it, and so it was a pleasure to see one where I was attracted to it, and then immediately depressing to realize that it's not a common deck to be found for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because they didn't make very many of them or if they um, people keep them when they've got them. I have no idea. But there you go. Tarot of the Southwest Sacred Tribes. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.